Howdy everyone, it's Luxfall Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at Alola Marowak in the Open Great League with the new buffed Shadowbone. Shadowbone was nerfed back when it was first released. The season it basically came out, it was nerfed to 75 power. This season, they decided to buff its power back up to 80, which is a nice change because this is the second buff Alola Marowak has received. Alola Marowak is a fire and ghost type with the move set of either fire spin or hex. I was definitely convinced to run hex this time, but I stuck with the fire spin just to have some firepower in the Great League just to see how it worked. The charge moves of Shadow Bone and Bone Club. Shadow Alola Marowak is not obtainable right now. The only way to really get it is to trade with someone in your community. So I built this team around Alola Marowak. I heard about this team. It was Obama Snow Azumarill. So I kind of just put it together just because I heard that used to be the meta all the way back in the old days of the Shadowbone Alola Marowak meta. Alola Marowak is weak to rock types and water types, which the Obama Snow can at least handle the water types. Rock types it at least has energy ball for. Obama Snow is going to be weak to the steel and the fire types and the fighting types that are going to trouble the Obama Snow, so the Marowak will be able to take care of those. Azumarill adds some bulk on this team and has some more synergy. When you pair this duo of Alola Marowak and Obama Snow together, the P PV poke reads that it's weak to about five different things fire, flying, ghost, rock, and I think water. It's probably not, but those five weaknesses, which Azumarill is going to handle most of them. With this team, I was able to go 7 and 12 since I played 12 battles as I wanted to keep 13 battles left for a second video that I'm going to release tomorrow. I will say I did go positive. I guess you could run this team to have some fun. It might have its kicks in the meta, but it is alignment dependent. Even though Alola Marowak was buffed twice, it's still of course hard to run the fire types in such a water heavy meta. If you guys enjoy videos like these, make sure to leave a like as it is going to increase the chances. It's going to be viewed by a wider audience. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to never miss another one like this. Without further ado, let's take a look at Alola Marowak in the Open Great League. So I go for double weather ball here because if my opponent does call a bait, they still technically have to shield the second weather ball or they would have to go for a risky no shield. Hydro Cannon does a lot of damage to our Azumarill. I was able to come into the Azumarill to absorb the Hydro Cannon, which our Alola Marowak would have just gotten one shot by. We're able to bubble the Empoleon down. It is a shadow variant, so it's easier to. Their final Pokemon is Shadow Dragonair. I go for an Ice Beam, which does get the first shield. The second Ice Beam won't knock it out, but it'll deal a lot of damage. I decide to go for the Bubble Down. I don't switch, anticipating my opponent may predict my combo play, so they tried to undercharge, but I think that undercharge was just them giving up. Next game, we see Shadow Dragonair on the lead versus our Alola Marowak. We have two great responses in the back. I come into my Dragonair. I'm over farming energy, and they come into a Vigoroth. I'm going to go straight for this Energy Ball. Energy Ball actually gets a shield, and I'm actually going to shield this because I want this Energy Ball damage. I'm also running Weather Ball on my Abomaso. You can run Icy Wind if you want. The spamminess of Weather Ball was definitely convenient to throw opponents off guard and to reach two moves when Icy Wind is slightly more expensive. The Icy Wind definitely has more utility however. So I did farm down the Vigoroth. Now the Shadow Dragonair comes back in. I do get baited with the Body Slam which I potentially could have no shielded. I'm going to go for a Shadow Bone because the Azumarill is going to wall the Dragonair but unfortunately it's just a Lantern in the back so a classic Dragonair Lantern core just to hard counter us. Two play roughs aren't going to knock out the lantern, so there's no way I can win this game. So Thunderbolt, almost one shot's a lantern. Thunder potentially could or get even closer. I go for a play rough, which unfortunately is not going to knock out the lantern, and I finally just know that I've lost. I should mention there is 10 battles. I definitely took out some because I was hard countered, but I guess I'll just keep this in just because it matches the 10 battles. 
Ariados is actually bad for a backline, but they didn't want any business against Ariados versus Alola Marowak. Next game, Alola Marowak into Talonflame. This is a pretty neutral matchup. I am going to shield any move that the Talonflame goes for. The Talonflame is actually going to go straight for a Brave Bird and also look to stay in this matchup. I should have done three Fire Spins as that would have been more worth my turns. So I am able to go for three Fire Spins this time, go for the Shadow Bone, and Shadow Bone actually gets No Shield to take out the Talonflame. Bomb Snow should be pretty free now, however they come into a Lantern, I'm able to CMP tie the Shadow Bone to their Surf, so my Lola Marowak has done as much damage as it could this game. Now we're going to come into our Bomb Snow, as they shouldn't have a counter to it, and it turns out they are core broken with Lantern and Trevenant versus our Bomb Snow. I'm going to go for the Icy one, which nearly one shots Trevenant, and the opponent concedes the match. So, hard counters back and forth. Next game, we have an Alola Marowak Mirror. We are the Shadow version versus they are the non-Shadow version, and the opponent also isn't running Hex. I run a pretty decently high-ranked Alola Marowak. Most Alola Marowak are going to be 10-10-10, so the opponent is most likely going to win CMP. I go for a Bone Club bait. Bone Club, not a very good move. So two Bone Clubs, even though I'm successfully going for two, still doesn't knock out. So I should have just full, full sent the Shadow Bone. The opponent comes in with a Napoleon. I wasn't able to snipe the Alola Marowak with the bubble damage. Now, the Empoleon used to be pretty bad in this matchup, which is pretty embarrassing considering it resisted all the moves. But because of Steel Wing, Empoleon actually is an Azumarill counter now, as it does deserve to be. So, I'm going to go for a Play Rough, which should get the shield from the Empoleon, which is very nice. So, my opponent should be at two Hydro Cannons now, or they're one short. So I can wait a turn and I'm able to catch the Hydro Cannon. I could have immediately come in to get a Weather Ball. They come into their Alola Marowak to get some Fire Spin damage. They come back into the Empoleon and unfortunately they're going to be able to get the farm down. Just shield this and Hydro Cannon or Alola Marowak. So you can see how costly that bait was. It's very sad we're not going to be able to see the third Pokemon. I actually don't know what was in the back. I couldn't really team read an Alola Marowak and Empoleon. Maybe it was a Charmer. But next game, Alola Marowak into Shadow Mawile. My opponent revealed they had the Fairy win. So when they switched into Kofa Grigus, I wasn't exactly sure what to do. I switched into my Bomb Snow because I still thought the Mawile had Fire Fang and I wouldn't need Switch. My opponent goes for a Psychic for a a 10% defense drop chance, which is not to be seen. Psychic kind of needs a defense drop on Kofa Grigus, otherwise it's terrible. Shadow Ball is going to knock us out. I'm going to come into my Azumarill to get a little bit of energy. So, one bubble is going to take out the Kofa Grigus. Mawile comes back in, and I'm going to look to fake a Hydro Pump, but I'm just going to go for the Ice Beam, I believe. Play Rough deals slightly more damage, but I think I need two charge moves to knock out the small while. Ice Beam... Almost knocked out the Mawile just because it's that glassy. I'm going to shield an Iron Head because it could potentially knock us out. We both switch at the same time and my opponent actually switched into a Quavel. I thought it was a Polyrath at first. They CMP tied to the Shadow Bone to Liquidation. But now I see an easy way to win this game as I'm just going to Shadow Bone the Quavel, which gets the shield. And we're very close to a Play Rough to knock out the Quavel. So Liquidation does take us out. I'm just going to go for the play rough immediately and we are potentially into iron head range but a few bubbles are going to knock out the shadow mawile next game alola marowak into lantern our team is aba weak to this we do have at least bone club and shadow bone my opponent actually tried catching a charge move from the mandibuzz to the alola marowak but now i can send in my zoom rule. I think they should have taken the dominating lead that they already had. So I'm just going to no shield this. Mandibuzz isn't going to be able to flip this matchup. I'm going to over farm as much energy as I can just to have some play roughs to chip that Azumarill or the Lantern. Aerial Ace isn't going to do a lot of damage to us. Now a few are going to put us into the yellow health range. I see MP tight on the fourth Aerial Ace of the Mandibuzz. Ice Beam takes out the Mandibuzz. I go for the Ice Beam because once again... Two charge moves knocks out a mana buzz. 
Play rough is going to put the lantern into the yellow health range. I'm going to go for another play rough. My opponent doesn't go for a farm down. So now I'm going to come into my Obama snow. My opponent makes a good play to undercharge to get some spark energy back. They switch into their final Pokemon and it's Gallade. This is where Weather Ball is good because if I had Icy Wind, they would have been able to throw energy to catch back up on fast moves. I go for a Shadow Bone immediately, anticipating my opponent would call a bait, and they actually did. They get one shot by the Shadow Bone, and now Alola Marowak and the Abomasnow is going to be able to take out a Lantern with a Shield Advantage. Surf almost knocks out the Alola Marowak. It's a simultaneous knockout, but we still have Abomasnow for the win. Final game, Alolo Marowak into Guzzlord. This is probably one of the worst leads you could see. Bone Club is effective, but once again, it's a very bad move. My opponent switches into a Annihilate. I went for an Energy Ball immediately, but it's actually shielded by my opponent. I'm able to get to a Weather Ball at least, which is going to chip it. It actually puts it all the way into the red. I come into my Marowak. Now, they can run Night Slash, but I actually forgot... Annihilate could run Ice Punch for a second. There's just been so many Night Slash variants lately. We shield both an Ice Punch and a Shadow Ball. I'm able to get the Fire Spin farm down. They come into the Guzzlord, and then the back is a Claude Sire. Now I said to myself, I'm probably losing this game just because the Claude Sire is going to be able to overwhelm the Azumarill. We need Hydro Pump in this type of situation. They actually go for an Earthquake, so it's an Earthquake Stone Edge variant. So the only way I can win this game is if I farm up to a play rough for the Guzzlord and Guzzlord doesn't have enough energy, but it's pretty close to a move. Earthquake almost takes us out. I'm able to bank the play rough and I actually catch a stone edge, but this means Guzzlord can come in, farm us down. Our energy is pretty much useless here. My opponent basically, their only way to lose this game is deny, but honestly, if they did get denied, I would actually surrender this game. It would have been a win I'm not supposed to take. So two ways I win that game, saving shields for the Claude Sire versus Azumarill, or calling that Ice Punch bait. Alola Marowak being buffed also allows it to be possibly part of the meta where you might be able to get away using a fire type such as like Skeleturge or Talonflame. Alola Marowak basically joins that party. Hopefully we'll see more Alola Marowak in the Open Great League with this buff. That's going to be it for today's video. I'm Luxball Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.